we've talked about how We the Living is, is a novel about ideas and about a particular idea, and deliberately so, when Ayn Rand is writing the story and constructing the story, the story is about the relationship of the individual to the state. And that conflict of the idea is that in, should the individual live for himself and does he have the right, the moral right to live for himself? Or is the individual property of the state has a duty to serve the collective, to serve society? That's what the story is about. If you ask now what Ayn Rand's view of that and what the theme and meaning of We the Living is, it's that the state has no right to sacrifice the individual, to make the individual, and force the individual to live for the state. And that when this ideal, when this moral ideal or this moral political ideal is put into practice, what it means is it destroys the best individual who truly wants to live and live for themselves. So another way that Ayn Rand herself put the theme of We the Living and the meaning of the story It's about the sanctity of an individual's life and the evil of a, a collectivist state that sacrifices and that takes and demands that life. That's what the story is about. So it's about the sanctity of life and then the evil of a collectivist state that tramples on an individual life. And let's talk, so this is the main theme in We the Living, and let's talk a little bit about this. And let's talk in particular about what does it mean to say it's about the sanctity of an individual's life. And now notice that sanctity is a religious term, I mean, or is a term that most of the time you see in a religious connotation. And when you read We the Living, it's about the sanctity of life, it's about the sacredness of life, It's about having reverence for life. These are, this is wording and imagery that comes up in We the Living. And it's deliberately so. What Ayn Rand is saying, if you ask, what is her answer to who are the truly living? What does it mean for an individual to truly be alive? I think Ayn Rand's answer is it emerges from We the Living. It means an individual who's dedicated but dedicated in a religious, devoted. So dedicated in a religious sense, that they're devoted, passionately devoted to their own life. They're not devoted to something outside themselves. They're not devoted to society or to the state as Andre is. They're not devoted to God as Lydia is towards the end of the story. Their focus and their reverence and their devotion is to their own life. And so Ayn Rand is deliberately taking some of the terminology and the concepts that people say or people think of as these pertain and pertain only to religion and to God and to something, a cause outside yourself. And Ayn Rand is saying, no, these terms should be applied to one's own life and one's attitude towards making it the best that it can be. And one way we can see this captured in the story of We the Living is the exchange between Kira and Andre about God. So, and this is from Ayn Rand's a, a atheist writer, and, but it's deliberately put in these kinds of terms. And we get that Kira doesn't believe in God in this scene, but it's this issue of where one's reverence and one's devotion should be and towards what, and that this is part of what it means and what Ayn Rand means about the sanctity and holding that human life and that your individual life it is deserving of being regarded as an attitude of, of sanctity, of reverence, of devotion towards it. So here's that scene. Do you believe in God, Andre? No. Neither do I, but that's a favorite question of mine. An upside down question, you know. What do you mean? Well, if I asked people whether they believed in life, they never understand what I meant. It's a bad question. It can mean so much that it really means nothing. So I asked them if they believe in God. And if they say they do, then I know they don't believe in life.
Why? Because you see, God, whatever anyone chooses to call God, is one's highest conception of the highest possible. And whoever places his highest conception above his own possibility thinks very little of himself and his life. It's a rare gift, you know, to feel reverence for your own life and to want the best, the greatest, the highest possible here now for your very own, to imagine a heaven and then not to dream of it, but to demand it. So the individual who's truly living, I mean, this is the meaning of the story in We the Living, the individual who's truly living has a kind of reverence and devotion to his own life. And then what does that mean in more concrete terms to have this reverence? That's what we see through the character of Kira. It's in her passionate dedication to her own personal values, to knowing what they are, to really having them. And we see that Kira has a constellation of values that have deep meaning to her about the career that she wants as an engineer, the music she loves, the man she loves and the the place that Leo holds for her and the value that Leo holds and that she's willing to do so much on behalf of trying to save Leo. We see her personal values. We see why she holds these values. But the first element and a crucial element to be among the living, to be, uh, to use the title, we the living, to be truly alive is to have these personal values and to know what they are and to be passionate about them. And the second element I think that you get in the story of We the Living, you have to have personal values and you have to know why you regard them as values. You have to, so again from that quote, it's to seek the highest possible, to seek the best for yourself and the best in life. Well, you have to have really thought about what is the best. So it's not just to have values, but why are they your values? Why do you want them? Why is it right? to be seeking these kinds of things. Why is it good? And to have thought about that. And Kira has views about why her career is a proper career um, and she's not going to get enmeshed in the lies and the propaganda of the Soviet state. She's going to be a builder. She's going to deal with facts and mathematics and, and in things in which you cannot lie and still function. She has a view of what she likes and the, the joy that she finds in the music that she likes. She has a view of what she admires and respects in Leo, of of his self-confidence and his conviction that life and your life counts and his disdain for the Soviet state and the collectivist ideal. So it's, she knows why she wants what she wants. And then you have to pursue to be truly living. You have to want things and passionately want them. You have to know why they're the right things to want. You have to have reasons for why you think this is what I should be pursuing. And then you have to actually pursue them and work and put in the effort and you will meet obstacles, you'll meet opposition, and you have to work to overcome those obstacles and opposition. Just as we see Kira all the time trying to work around the obstacles and opposition she faces and trying to get a job and trying to be able to send Leo to the south to the Crimea she puts in an enormous amount of work and effort. And this is the picture you get in We the Living of if the story is in in terms of its theme or deep meaning, if it's a story about the sanctity of human life and what it means to truly be alive, what I think it boils down to in We the Living is you have personal values, so you have to know what you want, you have to know why you want it, and then you have to pursue it and pursue it doggedly. Um, and not be allow people to deflect you from the path of your values. And if that's what you're doing, then you're truly alive. And the character in the story who does this and who does this fully, and the only character in the story who does this and does this fully is Kira. So she's the representative of the truly and the fully living. And then the point of the story is how the collective estate destroys her. And so it destroys the best kind of individual, the individual who truly wants to live and is truly trying to live and cannot in a collectivist state. We the Living is about, the the, the basic theme is about the sanctity of life and how the collectivist state crushes it. So the, the story has to depict both aspects. It has to depict 
what it means to say that the individual life that it has one should have reverence for it, a devotion to it the sanctity of, of an individual's life it has to depict that the story has to contain that and show you that and what it means and it does that i think primarily through the character of kira and then secondarily through leo and andre's reaction to kira and given what kira is and that she's devoted to her life she revives leo's will in a certain sense and that he tries to hang on and tries to hang on to his life and you see through the story of kira and andre that andre comes to understand the importance and the crucial importance of personal values that he's never experienced before and he comes to have a real reverence for joy and for his own happiness and for the individual's happiness that he never had before so but you get it through the character of kira and then through andre and leo but through their interaction with kira so that's how you get about the sanctity of human life And then what do you get to show that the collective estate crushes the truly living? Well, I think the easiest way to look at this issue is to again go back to what it means to be truly living and then the way in which the state, the collective estate, brings a halt to all these things. So to be truly living was to have real passionate desires, to want values, to have a real ambition for values and then to think about well what is truly valuable what should i be seeking what is it right to seek so it's to want things to know why you want them and then to really pursue them to act for them to put in the effort to acquire the things you want out of life it's the person who does that and is devoted to that that's to truly living and it's precisely those kinds of activities that the collective estate clamps down on and ultimately destroys think of it now first in terms of that you have to passionately want things and that you have to have ambition to reach values and values and more values as kira put it that you have to be striving for the best in life for the highest possible and to keep striving and attaining the highest possible to keep building you have to have a real ambition for the truly living have an ambition to live and to acquire values and the collective estate clamps down on that and the way that you get this through the story of we the living is in particular um of thinking of people and their future and can they think about their future and can they have ambition for the future and when you look at the characters and the the good characters in it what they all lose is their future and therefore an ambition for making their future even better than the present or in the case of we the living making it better but even if you lived in a free country to be truly living is to have ambition for values to be trying to acquire things that are even better and better and so even if your present circumstances are good it's to try to make them even better and to try to make even more out of your life so that ambition to living is crucial on Ayn Rand's view and what you get in we the living to be truly alive and all the characters lose their ambition and they lose it because of the state so Kira's father Alexander he loses his business it's nationalized by the state and he had, now he doesn't have any ambition in life anymore and he shrivels up and he shrivels away or vasily in a, a similar kind of uh, character to alexander in that he also had a prosperous business that's taken away it's destroyed by the state and he loses his ambition he kind of tries to project it on to his children that well he not he, his life has been destroyed by the state but his children are going to have a better life but then he loses them he loses victor to the communist state got the communism uh Victor makes terms with the communist state he loses Irina who's sent to Siberia he loses his future and and his hold on a future and having ambition for the future Leo loses his future when he's kicked out of the university 
He has nothing to study, he has nothing to hope for. And Kira loses her future when she's kicked out of the institute and can no longer become an engineer. So it's, you see through the actions of the state how the individual characters are losing their ambition for values to ha passionately want things because they can never reach that which they passionately want and they can't reach it because of the state. So you see from that aspect of what it means to truly be alive, the state is clamping down on the individual. Now if you take the second aspect, so it's you have to want things and passionately want things, you have to have ambition and you have to know why you want these things, which means you have to think about them and you have to think deeply about what you want. Now is thought possible in this collectivist state? Well no, this too the state clamps down on. Um, uh, Sasha remarks uh, oh, sorry, Irina remarks about Sasha at one point. He's kicked out of the uh, the university university for thinking in the land of free thought. Um, and it's obviously an ironic uh, statement in that the Soviet propaganda and more generally collectivist propaganda says, well, this is going to be a world and a and a and a realm of free thought. But what you see in actual practice is the clamping down on thought. And you see it, um, I mean, you see it most, uh, probably the, the, the most evidence for it, or the clearest kind of case, is just tossing people out of the universities because they don't have the right background. They're not, their parents aren't members of the proletariat. And so, so we toss you out, you can't study, you can't learn anymore. There's obviously that element, but it's much more prevalent and much more insidious than that, in that the people in a collectivist state and the people that caught in the, the Soviet nightmare never have a chance to think. They never have time to think. Their days and nights are consumed by the state. So they have to wait in line to try to get jobs. They have to wait in line to try to get food. They have to wait in line to get bread and milk and onions and so, so one element is this an enormous amount of time just trying to eke out a living and then even if they do manage to eke out a living their evenings are and nights are consumed but they have to go to propaganda meetings um uh learn about the the soviet revolution and learn about the statistics or, or supposed that most of these statistics are made up about what's happening in russia and they have to recite these facts and so, their whole lives and their time, day to day, is consumed by the state. When would they ever think about things? When would they ever have the time, the leisure time, and the personal time to think? They don't have it in the collectivist state. At one point, uh, when Andre's talking to his superiors, and he's, he's, he's starting to question them a little bit, and he says, what relevance are my personal affairs to you? And the replies, your what affairs? There are no personal affairs in a collectivist state when this ideal is fully implemented. And that's what you see um, in the story. And Irina captures this, that this is what she's observing around her, that it thought is becoming impossible. And that means as well thought about what's truly valuable in life is becoming impossible. And this is what she tells, this is an exchange between Irina and Kira. You know, we're all trying so hard not to think at all, not to think beyond the next day, and sometimes even not beyond the next hour. Do you know what I believe? I believe they're doing it deliberately. They don't want us to think. That's why we have to work as we do. And because there's still time left after we've worked all day and stood in a few lines, we have the social activities to attend, and then the newspapers. Do you know that I almost got fired from the club last week? I was asked about the new oil wells near Baku and I didn't know a damn thing about them. Why should I know about the oil wells near Baku if I want to earn my millet drawing rotten posters? Why do I have to memorize newspapers like poems? Sure, I need the kerosene for the primus, but does it mean that in order to have kerosene in order to cook millet? I have to know the name of every stinking worker in every stinking well where the kerosene comes from? Two hours a day of reading news of state construction 
for 15 minutes of cooking on the Primus. Well, and there's nothing we can do about it. If we try, it's worse. Take Sasha, for instance. So I read us precisely making this point that the, the state is deliberately consuming all the time of people's lives so that they have no time to think for themselves and about themselves. And this is the way, so if what it means to truly be alive is to passionately want things and to think about what it is that you want and why you want it and to know why you want things. That too, the collective estate is uh, destroying. It's destroying a person's ability, the individual's ability to do this. So to be truly alive is to know what you want, to know why you want it. Both of those are being destroyed by the collective estate. And then it's to act. It's to act in the pursuit of your values. And that too is impossible under the collectivist state. Think of the difference if you lived in a free society. If you wanted to go to a university, or if you wanted to get a job, or if you wanted to buy food, what is it that you do? Well, you find different universities and you apply to them and you hope that you can make through interaction with other private individuals or a private organization that you can come to. I want to be a student and I'm ready to pay and they want me as a student. Um, and you make an arrangement and you go to the university. It's not an issue between you and the state or you and the government. The same when you go buy a loaf of bread or a, a gallon of milk. It's you go and find someone who wants to sell these things and you engage in a, in a transaction, in a trade, two private individuals or you and a private company, uh, the grocery store. It's not an issue between you and the state. You don't need state permission for what university you're going to go to, of whether you can buy bread or whether you can buy milk in a free country as we live in outside of Soviet Russia. It's, you're not functioning by constant permission from the state, but in a collectivist society, if it is that the individual is completely subordinate to the state and subordinate to society, he needs constant permission from the state for every action that he's going to undertake. Remember, there's a Kira and Leo at one point want to spend the evening outside of the city in the country. What they find out is, well, you need to have to fill out four different forms and get permission. And they give up and they stay in the city. And this is what life is like under the collective estate. It's constant permission. That is, you can't act. You're not free to act, which means you're not free to pursue the values that you actually have. And so even if you formed some personal values, you're not free to pursue them. As Leo's not free to study what he wants, as Kira is not free to study what they want. And I mean, obviously, a crucial freedom that you can do. You can't go where you want. They can't even go outside the city, let alone across the borders of the collective estate. So the collective, if you think what it truly means to be alive, it is to have passionate values. So what you want, you know, why you want it, and then that you act for it. The collective estate puts an end to all three of those elements. And this is the way in which the story depicts the clash between having reverence for one's life and truly trying to live and a collectivist state that, as Kira puts it, forbids life to the living. This is what it means that it forbids life to the living. And that's the basic theme that we the living is focused on. And if you ask, well, what's the meaning of the story? It's how true life is strangled by a collectivist. State. And that we've talked now, I've talked about some of the elements through which you'd see that strangling of life.